What's up, everybody? It's Josh. We need to talk about new MCU X-Men news that when I first heard it had me screaming like Darth Vader at the end of Revenge of the Sith. But don't panic, because I've reached out to the source themselves, and I got updates about this story that actually made me kind of hopeful about what the Marvel plan for the X-Men is going to be moving forward. Also, I just want to say, we are beginning to give one dope, nerdy thing away to a lucky subscriber each month. This month, we are giving away the reformed Mjolnir from Love and Thunder. And I know, that movie wasn't that great, but this Mjolnir is still really awesome. So subscribe if you haven't for a chance to win the Mjolnir, but I'm honestly hoping one of the OG subscribers wins it. Now, smash the like button and let's begin on this new First, let's start with the bad news. So I saw this pop up on Twitter yesterday and it says that the X-Men will not appear in the MCU until phase six or seven. What did he say? And again, I had a pretty emotional reaction to this because gosh, dang it, I'm really ready for the freaking X-Men in the MCU. It's not that I'm mad, I'm just disappointed. And also mad. Now, I, like many of you, when I first heard this news, probably thought of the rumor we've been discussing for some time on the channels and the streams and in the videos that Kevin Feige cannot actually do anything X-Men until 2025. This rotten and disgusting rumor had started just a couple of weeks ago, and it was indicating that due to some contractual issues with the producers and the actors that played the X-Men in the Fox movies, Kevin Feige wasn't even going to be able to recast these characters or do anything with them significantly in the MCU until 2025. And I was like, oh no, that rumor's probably true. Dang it all, we're probably not going to get a lot of X-Men until then. And so I went right to the source. I talked to Daniel, and that's actually not the case. I'm very happy to report that although this news is a bummer, it does not confirm the rumor about the Fox X-Men contract thing, preventing Feige from being able to do this stuff until 2025. In fact, Daniel told me straight up, that stuff is not true. That rumor's not true, and that's not the reason that they are doing this and holding off on the MCU X-Men until phase six or seven. And the real reason that Feige is doing this is actually kind of awesome, and I want to get into that. The good, really good, freaking awesome makes this all okay news is that Feige's intention here is to actually give the Fox X-Men characters a proper goodbye and to utilize Fox X-Men in Secret Wars. And so what this actually means is that the initial report of no X-Men until phase six or seven is actually indicating that we won't get the MCU 616 version of the X-Men until phase six or seven, which means that you won't be seeing the X-Men have their own movies just set in 616. You won't see the X-Men team of the MCU forming until phase six or seven, but it's also possible that Hugh Jackman as Wolverine is just the tip of the iceberg as far as Fox X-Men characters that are going to be returning to the MCU, or I guess more properly, the MCM, the Marvel Cinematic multiverse. And when I heard this, I calmed the F down because it's definitely not as bad as no X-Men. I mean, there are a lot of Fox X-Men characters and actors that played them that I'm actually quite fond of. And I'm excited to see what Feige will do with these characters, bringing them into different movies like Deadpool 3 and maybe even more multiversal things as we head towards Secret Wars. And it's funny because I immediately thought of an old interview with the Russo brothers where they were talking about Secret Wars and they were literally talking about having the access to all these different Fox characters and that would be a a lot of fun stuff to do in Secret Wars. Adored uh, uh, growing up with Secret Wars. It's incredibly ambitious. It would be bigger than Infinity War and Endgame. Now I, like many of you sweaty, awesome nerds out there, probably thought, why not both? Why can't you bring in the Fox X-Men via the multiverse and also establish the X-Men of the MCU 616 at the same time? Because when it comes to the freaking X-Men, the more the freaking merrier. But then I started to think about how the nostalgia for these old Fox X-Men characters could be played on by Feige and give us a really, really cool couple of phases here leading into Secret Wars. And the more I thought about this, the more I was like, wow, this is actually pretty genius because Marvel is currently at this time and place kind of losing some of its nostalgia draw. A lot of the characters from the Infinity Saga are no longer around and we're missing them. And Secret Wars makes this big promise of bringing some of those characters back, the Sony characters, the Fox characters, and the Fox X-Men characters themselves are pretty cool. It's just their continuity directors and writers were definitely not as good as what we get nowadays in the MCU. And so to be really clear and explain to you what is going on from Daniel's perspective, it is that you will not see the X-Men re booted in the MCU until phase six or phase seven, but you will see a lot more 
Fox X-Men characters, maybe from the older Simon Kinberg class, you know, first class group, maybe from the OG stuff. And I mean, if you think about it, we've already seen Feige doing this. He has used Sir Patrick Stewart in the Multiverse of Madness. He's bringing Hugh Jackman back and putting him in Deadpool 3. And I think Deadpool 3 is probably a movie that will see a ton of different Fox X-Men there, but it's also possible you'll get them sprinkled throughout in other projects. Now, I do want to say that I don't actually think mutants are going to hold off until phase six or seven. I mean, we're already seeing characters like Kamala Khan and possibly, probably Namor, who, by the way, looks absolutely freaking awesome in the new Wakanda Forever trailer. I'll do a breakdown on that tomorrow. But we're seeing a lot of these mutants already pop up in the MCU. And so I think the mutant phenomenon and a lot of X-Gene stuff is going to be happening in phase five. You just won't see the proper X-Men, you know, Xavier School, Magneto versus Charles and things of that nature until after that. Now, what this means for Secret Wars is pretty mind-blowing because I'm getting this feeling that what Feige is promising people like Hugh Jackman, maybe Halle Berry, maybe freaking Sir Patrick Stewart, you know, Fazbender, any of these people that played this role before, I think what he's saying to them is, yo, you're going to come back and not just for like a fun little cameo thing, but you're going to be a very important part of my Secret Wars movie. I want to do some really fun multiversal stuff. I want the X-Men to be given a proper goodbye, have a lot of love and nostalgia for these older films while integrating them into my plan in a really, really cool way, which probably really excites the actors. It's going to excite us, the fans. And it's pretty genius for Feige himself because unlike what's going on with Spider-Man, he has absolute and complete control over all of the X-Men stuff. That is now completely owned by Disney. So it's not like Sony where he's going to do a few good things, have weird, you know, post-credit scene connective tissue and then be hands off on some movies that are absolutely horrible like Morbius. No, instead, Feige gets all of these toys, all of the Fox X-Men toys, and I think he's going to build something really extravagant and interesting heading towards Secret Wars. Secret Wars is going to be this big celebration and a proper goodbye to a lot of the Fox X-Men characters and actors. And I think the other real genius secret sauce kind of thing that Feige is doing is he's allowing for the X-Men in the MCU to be a major driving force of Phase 6 and Phase 7 after Secret Wars. When Secret Wars is done, maybe some of the main Marvel characters will have had an interaction with versions of the X-Men and mutants. There will also probably be some new mutants sprinkled in to what happens on Secret Wars, like Kamala Khan, but will roll out of Secret Wars and have all of the hype of the new X-Men, new mutants, and maybe even Avengers vs. X-Men being set up in Phase 6 and 7, which is pretty smart from Feige's perspective because after Secret Wars, you're going to need some kind of boost to the MC because I think it, we're just going to have like crazy dopamine withdrawals after friggin Secret Wars. So it does kind of make sense to have the X-Men in the MCU showing up after that. So like I said, good news here, bad news here, ultimately an outcome that I think I'm okay with as a fan, but I definitely want to know what you think about it. So let me know in the comments section here. Smash a like on this video if you had a good time. Subscribe to this channel because it helps us out and you could win that dope Mjolnir. And if you want to watch another video, why not check out this crazy video I just did about how Kevin Feige is fixing every problem that the MCU Phase 4 had.